All right, so we've looked at Taylor polynomials, which motivated us to consider power series, okay? Uh, we saw there, if, if you start taking n to infinity for a Taylor polynomial, you're looking at what a Taylor series is. And we saw how these Taylor uh, polynomials could approximate functions. So uh, that's a good motivation to consider power series. But consider the following geometric series. Okay, we've looked at this before. And we know that, you know, if r is, the, the absolute value of r is strictly less than 1, then this geometric series will converge to uh, 1 over 1 minus r. Now let's replace r with the variable x. When we do that, we get, you know, just changing r to x. But now, this is a function. So what exactly are we saying? We're saying that provided the absolute value of x is strictly less than 1, this infinite sum here, which involves a variable, is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. We could represent this function here with that infinite uh, series. Thus, power series are functions and may represent familiar functions under the right conditions. Uh, one of these right conditions is going to be convergence, okay? And so uh, let's study the convergence of a power series. So definition of a power series. A power series has the general form that you see here, here where A and CK are real numbers and X is a variable. Okay, so that's kind of the major difference between a power series and, and just a good old-fashioned series. The CKs are the coefficients of the power series, and A is called the center of the power series. The set of values of X for which the series converges is the interval of convergence. Okay, So all values of X where this series will converge is called the interval of convergence. The radius of convergence of the power series, denoted R, is the distance from the center of the series to the boundary of the interval of convergence. Okay, So we have a theorem. A power series that you see here, centered at A, converges in one of three ways. The first way is that the series converges absolutely for all x. In this case, the interval of convergence is minus infinity to infinity, and the radius of convergence is infinity. Secondly, there is a real number r strictly greater than zero, such that the series converges absolutely for x minus a strictly less than r and diverges for x minus a strictly greater than r. So if your point x is farther than a distance, strictly farther than a distance r from the center a, you'll get divergence, and if it's less, strictly less, you'll get um, uh, convergence. Well, what about when you're right at the distance r? Okay, uh, well, this distance r is the radius of convergence, and the interval of convergence is at least this, and possibly the endpoints. You got to check the endpoints. That's important. Uh, the third way that you could get convergence for these power series is that the series converges only at A, which is pretty trivial. I mean, plug in A in there and you only get that C naught term. Uh, in which case, R is equal to zero and the interval of convergence is just the set X equals A. So the general procedure that we'll be using to figure out the radius and interval of convergence is as follows. Step one, we'll use the ratio test or root test to find the interval on which the series converges absolutely. And that's going to give us the radius of convergence. Okay? Uh, so that will give us the radius of convergence R. And then we're going to use the radius of convergence to find the interval of convergence. So if r is equal to infinity, the interval of convergence will be minus infinity to infinity. If r is equal to zero, the interval of convergence is just that single point x equals a. And if r is strictly between zero and infinity, so it's finite but strictly positive, the interval of convergence consists of the interval that you see here and possibly one or both of its endpoints. So we've got to check the endpoints independently. We've got to check both of them. Determining whether the series converges at the endpoints, x equals... Uh, a minus r and x equals a plus r amounts to analyzing 
the following series. So we got to analyze both of those series directly. And this is basically how we do it. So let's go ahead and apply this procedure. All right. Find the interval and radius of convergence for each power series. Let's start with A. We have the following power series. And so we start with the ra ratio test. Okay, and typically we'll always start with the ratio test. I mean, we can use the root test, but typically we'll start with the ratio test. Uh, here we'll get the limit as k goes to infinity of ak plus 1 over ak. That's just the... Um, the the uh, ratio test and uh just like you we do with the ratio test we, we will wherever we see a k we put a k plus one there for that term so we get that ratio here and we get this value and this equals zero we're holding x fixed while taking that limit x is treated just as a constant okay we are taking the limit as k goes to infinity not x so x is considered a constant when taking the limit. And regardless of what x is, you're always going to get a limit of 0. Limit of 0 implies convergence then always. Hence, this will absolutely converge for all x. Okay? So x, regardless of what x is, you're always going to get that limit of 0 when you take k to infinity. So the radius of convergence is infinity, and so the interval of convergence is minus infinity to infinity. What about for B? Here we're going to use the root test, just because these have, you know, they're taken to the power of k everywhere. So it's pretty convenient. So, all right, we do that, and we end up with that term there at the end when we take k to infinity. Okay? Uh, notice that you'll just get one and one there and taking the limit as k goes to infinity of a constant okay this is a constant with respect to infinity we'll just give you that and what do we need we need this to be strictly less than one that's how we'll get absolute convergence okay uh the the root test and the ratio test that r equals one or rho equals one are is inconclusive that's why we have to check the endpoints independently well then uh we impose this condition that rho is strictly less than 1, and we get that condition there. This automatically gives us that the radius of convergence is 4. And so our center is 2, so we subtract 4 from 2 to get the left endpoint, and the right endpoint is 2 plus 4. And so here goes our uh, where this uh, uh, power series will converge absolutely. And now we must check the endpoints. That also cannot be emphasized enough to check the endpoints. Okay? So two things that cannot be emphasized enough. X is held fixed when taking the uh, limit with, with respect to K and check the endpoints. So to check the endpoints, we'll plug in the endpoints. So X equals negative 2. We just plug it right into the uh, series there. We get negative 4 and we just have this 1 and clearly the limit of 1 as k goes to infinity is, is 1, and so it's not 0, and so it diverges. Uh, likewise, uh, we get, when we plug 6 in, we get minus 1 raised to that, that diverges 2 by the divergence test. And so the interval of convergence is just negative 2 to 6, and notice that we have these uh, parentheses here. They're not the square brackets. They're parentheses, which means it does not include the endpoints, excludes the endpoints. All right, C, again, we follow that standard procedure, and uh, the, ratio, the ratio test is going to be useful there. And we end up with uh, this over here, and this will equal infinity for any x not equal to 0. So when x equals 0, this is going to be 0. Otherwise, it's going to equal infinity for x not equal to 0. And so the radius of convergence, the, the you know, r is strictly greater than 1 and diverges for all x not equal to 0. And so your interval of convergence is just that point, x equals 0. Okay. What about d? d is uh, that um, series right there, x minus 2 raised to the power k over root k. Again, we follow this standard procedure. Uh, we take the limit, 
and we get x minus 2. We want r to be strictly less than 1 so that we get absolute convergence and so we impose this. So the radius of convergence is 1, okay? And then we go 1 to the left of 2 and 1 to the right of 2 uh, to, to get our interval of convergence at least includes this. And then we got to check the endpoints. So we'll plug in x equals 1 and we get this, and this converges by the alternating series test, the limit of 1 over root k goes to 0, and it's alternating, and so you have a non-decreasing, uh, you have a non-increasing uh, series uh, with, uh, uh, that's alternating, and whose limit also goes to uh, 0, and the terms goes to 0, and so uh, this converges by the alternating series test, so we do include that endpoint x equals 1. What about x equals 3? We get this, and this is divergent by the p-series. So our interval of convergence for d is 1 to 3, so it includes, this means it includes that square bracket, means it includes uh, 1, but does not include 3. And uh, the sort of final one is this common one, okay? x raised to the power k. Uh, we ran into that, so we should be comfortable with it up, up there, okay? We get these cancel, we get x, that needs to be strictly less than 1. And so the radius of convergence is, is uh, 1, and we get uh, that interval of convergence. We've got to check the endpoints, and the endpoints clearly diverge by the divergence test, so the interval of convergence is minus 1 to 1. Okay, and we kind of discovered that all the way, um, all the way up here, okay, by using the uh, geometric series.